I should start this off with some background. I'm a male, 19 years old, so I'm quite independent. And I'd say reasonably strong and not too scared easily. But this event has to be the most terrifying moment of my entire life. And just writing it out churns my stomach. I live in the US in a small town. I'm not going to say where about it is exactly for personal reasons, but let's just say everyone knows each other around here. My girlfriend lives in the same town. Let's just call her Rachel. And I'd say I'm around at her place 99% of the time. We spend a lot of time together. One day, me and Rachel were sitting in her living room. Her house is three stories and the attic is on the top floor. And her living room is on the first floor. As we were watching one of her TV shows, I can't remember what it was, but knowing Rachel it was some shit. I start to hear banging around the ceiling, knowing no one else could have possibly got in the house. I shrugged it off as the wind, or just creaky floorboards or some logical explanation. At least that would stop me freaking out. After about 10 minutes, I heard walking around, and I'm talking human footsteps. I never thought I would really be able to tell the difference between house noises and footsteps so distinctly, but this time I was completely sure this was a person walking around. Rachel looked at me in confusion. I asked calmly, is anyone else in here? And she said, why would someone be in here? In a cracked and on the verge on crying voice. My heart sunk to the bottom of my stomach, my palms were sweaty, and I built up what was left of my courage and shouted, hey, and the noises stopped. They just stopped. Now I was panicking, my jaw was clenched together, but I needed to check this shit out for Rachel or for my own curiosity. Me being the fighting type went upstairs to check and nothing was there. I checked everywhere possible apart from the attic that no one has ever been in due to it not being able to open. It was constantly jammed shut. I mean the handle would turn but it just wouldn't open so we left it, brushed it off and thought that it must have been the wind. A couple of months later the noises still happened every day and every night, but only when we were on the bottom floor yet we always checked and still nothing. We still didn't check the attic because we knew it was pointless and we couldn't get in. One night we were sick of the noises, I mean we hadn't heard footsteps in a while just banging but we said to each other the next time we hear a noise, we are going to run up as fast as possible to see. A couple of days passed and nothing. We always kept a knife in the bedroom just in case, we were just about to turn the TV off around 4 a.m. on a Sunday night and thud, 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 I swear someone was running, so I grabbed the knife, ran as fast I possibly could up the stairs to the third floor, and I heard a bang in the attic. I quickly jumped on the bed, turned the handle, and pushed the door, obviously thinking it was going to be shut. It wasn't. It opened. So I stuck my head up, and you wouldn't believe me. You had to be there to understand the fright of three people I saw in the attic with food packets everywhere. I shouted, who the heck are you? What are you doing here? I had no reply and I exclaimed again, I have a gun. Obviously I didn't have one, I just wanted to scare them. All I can remember seeing was a big sword-like knife. It was massive. So I slammed the door shut, ran outside with a trembling Rachel and called the police. In all honesty, they showed up within 10 minutes, much quicker than I expected. When they went into the house, the back door was wide open. The police went upstairs, but they were gone, all three of them. They must have run out the back door. I mean, I was so happy that this was finished, but what they found in the attic was very disturbing. They had my girlfriend's underwear in there with them. I never found out if the guys got caught, but I do know the police took everything in for evidence. Nothing has happened since, and it's been about a year. We're just so happy that nothing ever happened to either of us. But who knows what they were doing when we were asleep. It was summertime about eight years ago. During the summer, I used to vacate from the city to a little retreat upstate my grandparents' house. I did it every summer. It was a nice house, a big place with lots of rooms, sort of in the middle of nowhere, pretty quiet for the most part. It was pretty much in the middle of the woods. Our nearest neighbors were quite a ways down the road. 
There was plenty of room in that house. Four bedrooms, two bathrooms, three floors, plus an attic my grandparents never ever used. I basically got the basement all to myself. It was a sweet setup. There was a bathroom, fridge, television where I play my game console, and a comfortable couch to lounge around on all day. The perfect retreat to relax and unwind in peace when I wasn't running around exploring the woods. It was a typical Friday afternoon around 5 p.m., the most tiring part of the day where the sun is shining the hottest and I'm most tired. I was ready to unwind and settle down for the rest of the night when my grandparents informed me that they were going out with two friends to catch a show before going to dinner and that they'd be back later. I was stoked to hear this. I loved having the house to myself, especially after a long day. After ensuring everything was off and all the doors were locked, I saw them off and ordered a pizza. After it arrived, I retreated to my little man cave in the basement, and I locked the door so that if I fall asleep, my grandparents wouldn't wake me up if they decided to check on me when they arrived back home. Everything was going pretty great. A few hours passed, and by this point, the sun was completely down, concluding a very lazy Friday afternoon. It was roughly 10 p.m., I was in the middle of watching my show when I heard the floorboards creaking upstairs, the signal that my grandparents had returned home. It sounded like there were four sets of feet instead of two, so it was a safe bet they'd brought their friends over for company, which was pretty common. I heard chairs creaking and sounds of conversation, so I turned up my TV and relaxed back to continue watching. Before I knew it, I was drifting off to sleep. Just as I thought would happen, I heard the doorknob up above jiggle. I ignored it. After about two hours of dozing off and on, I decided to call it a night and head upstairs to my bed. It was around midnight and quiet, so I assumed everybody had gone to bed. I got up from the couch and headed upstairs to the first floor. I saw a few of the kitchen lights were on as well as the TV, but for some odd reason it was muted. I figured my grandma was probably in the bathroom and was watching a show or something. I left everything on and walked over to the stairs to the second floor. This was when I realized something wasn't right. From the downstairs you could see the doors to every room. At night when my grandparents were asleep, they usually kept their doors closed, and obviously the bathroom door closed if someone was using it. When I looked up, however, the upstairs was pitch black and I could see every single door was open. I called out upstairs, but I didn't get any response at all. In fact, it seemed as if the house somehow grew more silent. I walked over to the front window and looked out. Not a single car was in the driveway. I was the only one home. I called my grandparents to check in. They were still out and they let me know it'd be a late night. I asked them if they had stopped home at any point. They didn't. Nobody had come home since five o'clock. We weren't expecting any visitors either. The entire time it was just meant to be me in the house all by myself, except I wasn't. I knew what I had heard. I checked around the living room as quietly as I could, knife in hand. I refrained from calling the police like a total idiot. My grandparents had even offered to when I told them about the situation, but I opted not to. I silently checked the doors. They were all still locked. I checked the windows. They were locked too. I sat in the living room and listened hard. It was just silence. After about an hour, the front door opened and my grandparents were finally home. Their presence calmed me down a bit. We searched the rest of the house. There didn't seem to be any sign of a break-in. There weren't any other incidents after that and my grandparents have moved since then. I wasn't really able to sleep well in the house after that night. It always felt like I was being watched. To this day, I'm really not sure what it was. One thought dawned on me. We never did search the attic that night, nor did my grandparents ever go up there. There was so much space in the house, there was never any reason for us to. But maybe, just maybe, somebody else did. A comforting thought to have when the entrance to that attic was in my bedroom.
When I was a young teen, something started happening at night while I was sleeping. The first time, it didn't really bother me. I slept on the second floor, I stayed up late often, and I had trouble falling asleep. A lot of the time, I just lay in bed in the dark waiting to fall asleep. One night, I was lying in bed in the dark and the whole house was still and quiet. That was when I heard something sliding or brushing against the wall. The sound traveled along the wall, as if whatever was making the noise was leaning against the drywall as it walked. It was very faint, but the fact that it was such a delicate sound sort of contributed to how disturbing it was somehow. I lived in a heavily wooded area that wasn't quite rural and wasn't quite urban. It was definitely not city and was more like the far outskirts of the suburbs. Because of that, we had a lot of critter activity. I was not unused to hearing mice or even chipmunks in my walls, but mice or chipmunks like that, scurrying and scratching through walls. They make a lot of racket scampering and clambering through walls and ceilings, sometimes accompanied by squeaking. We were not overrun with mice, we always set traps. I'm just noting that so you know how familiar I was with animals in my walls. This, however, was very different. It sounded bigger, like too big to be in the walls. My walls were two by four frames with plywood panels and painted drywall. I remember when my dad built it. There wasn't any room for anything bigger than a chipmunk inside them. My room on the second floor was at the corner of the house, and there were no rooms on the other side of those walls. So it couldn't be my brother or sister in their bedrooms. It was very confusing. It went away and I went to sleep. But it came back the next night. There I was, lying in bed again in the dark, when it came back. I wish I could describe it. It sounded like something moving along the wall, brushing the sides of it as it did. It seemed to move along the whole wall, not in the top or lower part, or the middle. It was like the entire wall was experiencing this touch or presence. It was soft, and it moved from one wall to the next. My bed was in the corner of the room, against two walls. The headboard was against one wall, and the right side was against the other. This meant when the sound passed through the walls, it would brush behind my head, around my bed. I was right beside the wall, less than a foot away from it. I could almost feel this sound or presence through the walls. I told my parents the next morning because it was more disturbing this time and I remembered it. They told me it was probably just mice in the walls and ignored me. I asked my brother and sister if they heard it, but they also said no and dismissed me. I actually gave up telling anyone about it because nobody seemed to be paying attention to me, but the sound kept coming back from time to time. I grew to hate it. It began to creep me out more and more. I would hear something and think it was the sound, and be so relieved when it turned out to be something else. I would pull the covers up to my chin and just lay there waiting for it to stop. It would sometimes seem like it was right behind my head in the wall. It sounded like it was right on the other side of it. The hair on my arms would stand on end and I would be so still and quiet waiting for it to pass. I could not for the life of me understand what on earth was making that sound, and that made it that much more spooky to me. Then one day, weeks later, my big sister reported hearing sounds above her ceiling. My dad came up to her room and he heard the sounds too. That night he climbed up into the attic through our access door. I was along for the ride, helping him and watching him. He got up inside the attic and was looking around with a flashlight. I just had my head through the hatch when I heard him say, Uh-oh. I ducked down as he said, Get my gun. It took me a while to figure out which gun he wanted and where the ammunition for it was, but I brought him his rifle. What he discovered gave me such relief from the past few weeks of bad nightly experiences. We had raccoons in our attic. The sounds my sister heard were the babies squeaking, when my dad got up in the attic, he realized the mother raccoon was up there in the dark with him. She was growling and not happy. The .22 I got him was for his protection, because she was very likely to attack him to protect her babies. The sounds I had been hearing for weeks 
was the mother tearing up insulation to make her nest for the babies. She was sliding along the rafters, and the sound was radiating down the two-by-fours in the frames in the walls. It made it sound like she was right behind the walls, which really she was in my ceiling. It was very strange how the sound was conducted through the walls. The raccoons were relocated. I never heard the sound again.